In one of my previous videos, I answered a question about how often do people actually fall off their electric skateboards. In that video, I got a bunch of comments from people who bought an electric skateboard and fell off and got injured. So I think it's probably a good idea to talk about protective gear like helmets and pads, that kind of stuff. I don't consider myself an expert in this area, but I have gotten a number of requests to do this topic. So um, I'm just gonna talk about what I have and the pros and cons of each. So I'm gonna start with the helmets. This one here, this is a, just like a very basic, generic skate helmet. Lots of brands have helmets like this. Not much to say about it. You can get helmets like this from like Triple Eight, Protec. Lots of brands actually. It's not a bad helmet to start with. Protects the back of your head, protects your skull. It doesn't protect your face, obviously. Much better than nothing. This one over here is from Predator. It looks a little bit nicer. Has a little brim, so it kind of looks like a hat. This is a Predator FR7. It comes with a lot of pads so that you can customize the inside so that the helmet fits your head perfectly. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five different pads. And different sizes are included with this helmet. This is the helmet that I wear the most often. Next up is this full face helmet from Bell. This is the Bell Super 3R. This is a full face helmet and this jaw piece, it actually comes off so that you can wear it as either a full face helmet or a half shell helmet. <laughs> Give me a sec. Yeah, it comes apart like that. Honestly, I never take off the chin piece. And when I do, it always takes me forever. They have videos showing guys that take off the chin piece in like a few seconds, but it always takes me forever. My point is, if you're looking for a full face helmet, I don't think the removable chin piece is worth considering. But if it comes with one, it's okay too. I mean, it doesn't matter. I like this helmet because it's really lightweight. So in theory, all these vents, it's supposed to help keep your head cooler because whenever you're wearing a full face helmet, it's gonna get hot. Even with these vents, you're still gonna sweat when you wear this helmet, even with the uh, open face and the uh, and the vents. Maybe not in winter, but like definitely in summer. Just don't get this helmet thinking that you're gonna stay cool in it. You're still gonna sweat. If you're riding in a tuck position, this part of the helmet kind of blocks your view a little bit, but that's true of like regular skate helmets also. The only helmets that don't really block your view when you're in a tuck position are downhill helmets. So here's one of them. This is a uh, Predator dh 6 dash XG. Pretty cool helmet. This part over here, it's really high up so that when you're in a tuck position, you can still see in front of you. This uh, visor is removable. You can change it to a um, tinted one or a reflective one. I feel like you get kind of a, <laughs> how should I put this? You might get a bit of a false sense of security <laughs> when, when wearing this helmet. I do feel more safe wearing this helmet is what I'm saying. Cause I, I feel, I definitely feel like when I'm wearing this helmet, I ride faster, maybe faster than I should. It's probably because your ears are covered. You don't really hear the wind rushing past your face. Oh, but it does get hot though. That's kind of true of every full face helmet, something to be aware of. Next, let's move on to gloves. Okay. So I have two sets of gloves that I wear. One is a set of downhill slide gloves, but the other one also actually, but I'll just talk about these first. They have these removable pucks. The point is to let you be able to slide on like asphalt. These eventually wear out. So once they wear out, you just use it by new ones, stick them on. I like to wear these because when you fall, you instinctively just put out your hands. I think that's how most people fall. Like you, you fall forward and then you just put your hands out. With these slide pucks, when you put your hands out, you end up sliding. But the problem with some gloves is that the palm area is grippy. Your palm hits the ground and you end up snapping your wrist. That's far less likely to happen if you end up sliding. So that's why I like these. The problem with these is that for electric skateboarding, you can't really hold the remote. On some gloves, you can just move the puck down lower towards your wrist. On this glove, I can't really do that. On some gloves, you can. I bought this other glove. I like this one because it's thick and you can let your fingers out. And on this glove, I also sewed on a piece of Velcro lower on the palm and on the wrist area so that I can stick a puck right there on my wrist area. This way I can hold a remote over here. You can also wear wrist guards. They have a uh, like a plastic piece, a hard piece on the wrist. So if you fall, you end up sliding on the hard pieces on the wrist guard instead of um, instead of snapping your wrist. The problem with those again is that they make it difficult or impossible to hold certain remotes. So I still prefer slide gloves because at least I can move the puck lower. Let's move on to elbow pads. 
So I have two different sets here. These small ones, uh, these are really common pads. Again, Triple Eight, Protec, a lot of different brands have pads that are similar to these. These are the ones that I wear the most often. I also have bigger ones from Fox Racing. I have these because these cover more of the arm, like they cover the elbows, but also part of the arm. I've only worn this like once, once or twice, because I got these during summer and it was just really hot. And yeah, I just got kind of uncomfortable wearing these. But during the winter time, maybe I'll wear these more often. As for which one does a better job of protecting your elbows, probably these bigger ones. Generally, the bigger pads will do a better job of protecting you but if it gets really uncomfortable just wear what's comfortable like these still work the only issue i have with these is that they're more likely to slide down like once you hit the ground they might slide back or slide down depends on how you fall but at least they'll protect you from that initial impact uh let's move on to the hips so these, uh, I don't know what to call these, hip pads? Yeah, let's just call them hip pads. So I have a more heavy duty one and I have a thinner one also. The reason I have two is because I got this one first, the thick ones. They're just really bulky. They definitely work. I mean, I've fallen on these and I felt totally fine. They're just really bulky. So I got these thinner ones from G-Form. They work also. I don't know if they work as well, I don't think they work as well, but I've fallen on these also, and they do the job also. So I would rather wear these. I don't wear these very often. These I wear only when I'm in situations where I think I'm probably going to fall. Otherwise, I don't usually wear these. But they're good to have because there are going to be situations where you're going to be likely to fall on your hip. Oh yeah, these also protect your tailbone. That's pretty important also. Let's move on to knee pads. I have two different kinds over here. This is like a very generic kind that lots of different brands sell. Just very basic skateboarding knee pads. And here I have one from TSG. I believe this is made specifically for downhill skateboarding. This is like way more heavy duty than this one. It's also a lot more bulky. So I like both of them, but I wear this one way more often than this one. It's not that I don't like these. I, I like these a lot, but again, it's just really bulky. They both do the job. This one is gonna stay on your leg better than this one. With this one, it's kind of got the same issue as these smaller elbow pads. These knee pads, uh, the generic ones, they slide down kind of easily. Like when you hit the ground, it's gonna protect you from that initial impact, but then it's probably gonna shift position so you still get scraped. So when you wear these, you gotta make sure that you tighten it up. Another issue is that these elastic parts, they eventually wear out. So you're gonna have to replace these. This is actually my second set. My first one, it just got up. Well, this one's getting really loose also. So I'm probably gonna have to replace these pretty soon. Both of these, as you, as you can see, they have these hard shells, just like the gloves, just like the elbow pads. The point of these hard shells is that when you hit the ground, you can slide on them so that you don't just hit the ground and then, and then get like bent into a pretzel, you know? If you hit the ground and you end up sliding, you're less likely to get hurt. Oh, another issue with this one. Well, not really an issue, but just something you should know. You're supposed to take off your shoe when you put this on. So, cause you gotta stick your leg inside. I normally don't take off my shoes when I put these on. So that's partly why this has been uh, like stretched really badly. I mean, you could also wear this without sticking your leg in, but if you want them to stay on your leg better, you're supposed to put your leg through these. With this one, this downhill one from TSG, you don't need to put your leg through it. In fact, you can't. The way you put it on is, um, it has a bunch of straps. Look how big these straps are. So yeah, you, you don't have to take off your shoes. You just put these over your leg and then you put on these straps and then you clip this part and then this part comes around and then strap that part in. I'm being very vague, but the point is these stay on your leg really well. But like I said, they're really bulky. And um, also because of the shape, when you're standing up straight, like when you're not skating and you're just standing straight, you kind of feel it. It's like this pad, it wants you to bend your legs, but when you're just standing straight, it gets a little bit uncomfortable. The main thing is that it's kind of, it's really bulky. That's why I don't wear these very often, but for certain situations, I will wear these. Pads absolutely help. I'll talk about one more thing. This is a armored hoodie from Lazy Rolling. Nice thing about this is that it looks just like a normal hoodie, but it has pads in the uh, elbow and uh, shoulder area and also the back. It's also really convenient to put on. You just put it on like a regular jacket. Some people say that these are really expensive and yeah, they're kind of pricey, 
But if you look up motorcycle jackets, you're gonna find cheaper ones, but you're also gonna find more expensive ones. So I think the price is actually all right. I mean, these are really well made, but if you're looking for cheaper ones, yeah, you can find cheaper ones. Just look for motorcycle, uh, motorcycle jackets. Yeah, guys, wear your pads. If you look on my Instagram, there are times where you'll see that I'm not wearing any pads. Like I got no helmet, no pads. I only do that in situations where I'm not riding fast. Like I have a rule for myself. If I'm not wearing any pads, if I'm not wearing a helmet, I I limit my speed to 20 kilometers per hour. If I'm gonna ride faster than that, then I have to wear pads or I have to at least wear a helmet. But there are times where like during the summer, it might be too hot. And in that case, I just don't ride too fast. I just ride at a speed where I can run off the board. If you assume that you're gonna fall, what are you gonna wear to protect yourself? You know, that's that's kind of how I think about it. Another reason I care quite a bit about safety gear is because I don't have health insurance. If I break a bone, that's gonna be really expensive. And you know, other injuries can be really expensive also. So I try to be pretty careful about that. Also, I'm probably a lot older than most of you think. The older you get, the longer it takes for you to heal and the, the more easily you get injured. I'm also not very athletic, so that, that's another thing. I, I think if I were to get injured, it could get pretty bad. Also, don't be selfish. I mean, if you die, you're gonna make people really sad. So, you know, take them into consideration also. I wanna point out something important. Don't feel like you have to get all of this, okay? I, I know it looks like I have a bunch of different protective gear and I actually have more than this. When you're just starting out, get at least, like at least a basic helmet at least basic knee pads and basic elbow pads. Just get the cheap stuff. That's good enough when you're just starting out. If you've never electric skateboarded before, you might not know if you're gonna keep doing it. I mean, because honestly, electric skateboarding, it's not for everyone. Some people try it and then they, they decide that it's not for them. So these really cheap pads, I would suggest getting them first. In fact, they're still the ones that I wear the most often. Oh, gloves. Um, you might wanna start with wrist guards. I mean, you could use slide gloves also, but the issue, again, you may or may not be able to hold your remote. It depends on what your remote is like. Some remotes are like bigger and oddly shaped and uh, you might not be able to hold them with a slide glove or even with a wrist guard, actually. I don't know, for gloves, just try to find a solution that will allow you to slide. I also wanna talk about what not to get. So there are certain pads that are just really strangely designed. Designed. Like they have a hard shell and then they have a Kevlar cloth over it. The point of this shell is so that you can slide, right? So that when you fall, you slide. It makes no sense to have a Kevlar cloth over it. And gloves also. There is a company that says that they make e-skate protective gear and yet they sell gloves that have a really grippy palm area. If, if the palm area is grippy and you fall on your hand, you're gonna break your wrist. When you fall, you wanna be able to slide. Yes, you wanna roll also, but when you're going fast, sliding is gonna be better than rolling. I guess that's about it. Yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, 